Dare Eisendraha is a great map. It looks great, the atmosphere is great, the wonder weapons, though not all equally powerful, are fun to use, and let's be honest, who's not a sucker for medieval castles? But to me, what stands out the most about this map is its main quest. You see, most map quests are so big and complicated that you kind of have to make a commitment to doing them. However, Derizendraha feels like a map that you can pick up and play whenever you want, but it's also not so easy that it becomes unsatisfying to play. And the first reason I believe this is because the map is very accessible, especially in solo. Sure, you may have to give yourself a refresher if you haven't done it in a while, I certainly had to, but when you do know the steps, they're very easy to remember because they're in a nice, sequential order. You go back in time to get a code, to open a safe, to get some parts, to power up the death ray, to shoot down the rocket. But then you have to help a keeper go to the moon to turn off the security system, but it doesn't work, so you kill the keeper and destroy the moon. Uh, we don't need the moon, right? Nothing bad could come from that. Okay, sure, it's not quite that simple, but there is a logic that goes into the progression of these steps, which makes them easier to remember on this map than in most others. This map has also found a way to be challenging without the quest itself being challenging. Unlike maybe Buried with the Sharpshooter step or Gorod Krovi with its Valve step, there's nothing in this map that goes out of its way to be more challenging. The quest is simply a series of tasks to complete. Nothing more than an additional thing to manage along with everything else in the game. What this means is that the quest is only ever as difficult as the map itself. So if you're good at the map, then you're good at the quest too. Now the boss fight's a different story, but it's allowed to be. It's challenging, but it doesn't become chaotic or unfair. You just have to be prepared for it. But overall, the way that the difficulty is implemented into this quest is pretty unique. The only other maps that are kind of like it are the original Black Ops maps like Ascension and Shangri-La. But Dare Eisendraha has something going for it that these other two do not. It can be done in solo. Now today, that's not a big deal, but at the time, this map was only the fifth one that could be completed solo. And that's including Deris and the Giants. And unlike a map like Blood of the Dead, where a lot of the steps are just awful in solo, nothing in Der Eisendraha feels like it was made exclusively for co-op. The only change made to it in solo is the Keeper step, which only requires one bow to be completed instead of all four. But this is a good change because in a co-op game, no one should have to upgrade more than two bows. So it would be kind of unfair to have to do all four by yourself in a solo match. But most importantly, Dare Eisendraha's quest is just fun to do. Watching that rocket take off at the beginning of the match makes it feel like the quest is ongoing from the start, instead of just whenever you complete the first step. It also makes the end goal easy to understand and gives all the steps a clear purpose. It's fun to see a new side to Group 935, one that includes things that we already know like teleporters, eagle's nest, and hellhounds, but it also includes new aspects like keepers, panzers, and the Primus crew. I also really like the interactions with Dr. Groff, seeing how devoted he is to the group and how he felt when he thought Richthofen had betrayed him, the fear in his voice when he saw the Keeper, and just the line, your actions will not alter the outcome of the war. This whole quest just has something fun going on, whether it be some kind of spectacle to watch, or seeing how the new story merges with the old. It's just so good overall. I really can't think of another map with a quest as memorable, as fun, or even as accessible as Der Eisendraha. It's certainly not a perfect quest, however. For example, it's weird that you have to upgrade a bow, immediately use an unupgraded bow, and then go back and use the upgraded one to complete the first step. And things like having to wait around for the rocket test or the low gravity kinda sucks. But these are pretty minor things in what is otherwise a great map quest. Good to see you, Tank.